everybody. All right, I got some folks from England. Where are you guys from? England. England, what part of England? Um, from uh, Birmingham, me. John lives in London, but he's a man called Manchester. So, so John and... Jane. John and Jane, all right. He's Hi. a jammer on the guitar. So let's listen to a little music from England. <laughs> now he's going to raise his game. Yeah, there you go, bust it up. Oh, I want some singing as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I call it. Yeah. I call it an ukatar. Oh. Well, it's somewhere between a ukulele and a guitar, isn't it? Half like ukulele, yeah. Like a bass ukulele. Yeah, you can buy that one on Amazon. It's called a a rover. It's made by Washburn. <coughs> Both of my Washburn. The rover. It's got a little backpacker, a little yeah, case. Yeah, exactly. I, I, um, when we were traveling, I bought a folding guitar. And yeah. It just, I mean, to be honest, it just couldn't survive the journey. You know, it lasted so long. And then I was in Japan, and the waters were because I wasn't enjoying it. It sounded good. This sounds lovely, you know. Just uh, yeah, just, like I said, a little personal guitar. Perfect for red lights or just traveling. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, keep your fun. chops up, you know, and yeah. stay in shape for when you get to the next gig, you know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So um, yeah, but what I was able to, I was in this guitar shop. And there was nothing. The standard range was 300, 350,000 yen. Mm -hmm. So it's like. And it's made out of koa wood on you know, Amazon 275. You can get it for 175 if they're not koa wood. And they actually tune up pretty good. Yeah. How long have you had it? I've had that one about a year or so. It's the second one I bought. Uh, somebody stole my. Stole, I've had two guitars stolen out of my cabin. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you leave it unlocked or just don't look. Or I loaned it to this uh, guy that was a drug addict one time and. I was gonna let him play it for an hour and I'd come back, but and he seemed like, a, I mean, he was always there, you know, but then he just disappeared for a week and then my guitar was like hawked or whatever. He probably stuck in his arm, you know. I know I'll never get that money back. Yeah. But, yeah. Never loan your guitar to a junkie. Yeah. In, in life's <laughs> lessons, I think I'll just take that one from you. If that's we'd, have, we'd have probably never. Have been good with that one. Right? Probably don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't give it's them money or food or guitars. It's, you know, um, I'm just gonna James. Give him a we King James Bible. That's the greatest thing that ever came from England. The King James Bible, yes. I read my King James Bible every day. Wow. King Jimmy. He was great. I told him to translate it into English and they did the best job. They had God, I think God ordained this one. This is given by the Holy Ghost. It's KJV, King James Bible. Or KJ, KJ. King James Version. Uh, it, it was called the authorized version in 1611. He, author, he, he commissioned it to be translated by 54 of the world's greatest scholars in that area. Uh, they spent six years translating from Hebrew and Greek into the English language. Because there was a bunch of different versions and they were fighting over it. And so, so somebody brought up, why don't we make a new version? Hey, great idea to the king, you know, and, he's, and so he said, do it. And so they got together for six years and came up with this. And it's the greatest book that ever has been written, scientifically been printed more times than any other book. And it's produced more good fruit in the world than any other Yeah, it doesn't text. do any harm, that's the truth. The people would just, at least just keep the Ten Commandments, you know, we'd have world peace. Yeah. But they want to tear down the Ten Commandments because people love sin, they hate God. And it's, it goes against their conscience to go against God. Yeah, like the, I think that's it. If it as soon as you stop people doing what they want to do. Well, the liar knows it's wrong when he's being lied to, right? You don't want to be lied to, so you know it's wrong to lie. And you don't want to be stolen from. The thief knows it's wrong when he's being stolen from. And the murderer knows it's wrong when he's being murdered. The commandments are, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not kill. That's just three of the Ten Commandments. Those are great, you know? But all of them are good. Yeah. I must say, I, I have to say, I think that, have you ever been to Japan? I've not, no. But they have a really, I think they have a good way of being. They're very, they're very, you sort out your own stuff. You know, you don't cause a problem for other people. You can, you can reserve your place at a McDonald's table by putting your iPhone on it. It's that sort of place. Sure. Because they have this, you know, moral integrity and this group um, integrity, which I just don't think we have. It's sort of like, oh, well, I found that. Well, Christians have it. We Christians have it. Yeah. If you go to a community that's
it's all Christians, you can leave your doors unlocked, exactly. leave your cell phone on the table, nobody's gonna steal it. It's because of all the sinners. You've got to have police and law to punish sin and you know, to punish lawlessness. Sin is lawless. In the Bible, the, you know, the, it says, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law, 1 John 3, 4. So the Bible says sin is breaking God's law. And so, yeah, that's all sin is, just lawlessness. So I think Democrats just want to legalize sin. Wow. <laughs> that's why that's I say oxy, <laughs> the oxymoron is Christian Democrat. It's impossible. You can't be a Christian and a Democrat. Because the Democrats are famous for legalizing sin, like abortion, gay marriage. Just, you know, they don't... They want to be really light on the punishment for any kind of... Uh, but then there's the gun thing. They're on the right side of that today. Well, guns are just a tool, like a knife or a spoon, you know. If you know, if guns kill people, then spoons make people fat, you know. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. You know, yeah, fat people are, you know, they got to blame the spoon, you know. I, I mean, that... You didn't make yourself fat, your spoon did it. Yeah, I suppose there is a difference though, isn't there? On the it's a tool. It can be used for good or evil. Yeah. When a cop goes into a gay bar and shoots that guy, that Muslim shooting the gay people, that's being used for good. He's stopping an evil man from killing sinners. They are sinners, but you shouldn't kill them. You, know, you should preach the gospel to them. Yeah. So they can be repenting of their sin and turn to Jesus Christ. You don't kill them. Because then you just send them straight to hell. That's not nice. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I deserve to go yeah, to hell. Yeah, they don't have time. They don't have time then to repent. I'm glad I got saved, you know, before I died, you know, because I deserve to go to hell. If I'd have died at a certain point in my life before I was 24, I'd have went to hell. But I finally, by the grace of God, I stayed alive long enough to get to turn to God. And then Jesus forgives your sin when you repent and believe in him. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Yeah. And <clears throat> so, you know, I, I don't want anybody to get AIDS to die and go to hell or just, you know, yeah, follow well, a false thing, religion and it's die. About, it's very sort of, in a way, it's quite Buddhist, that, the idea of you need to be around long enough to mm -hmm. sort stuff out and actually get enlightenment. Yours is a different type of enlightenment. Well, error can embrace truth, but truth cannot embrace error. So many religions have truth in them and they're great and they're, they're doing good things and good works and yeah. charity and peace. These are good things that they've embraced from the Bible because they've embraced truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He made that claim, John 14, 6, the book of John chapter 14, verse 6. He claimed that he is the only way to get to God. And so that's an exclusive statement. And so truth is exclusive, not inclusive. So he didn't include everybody. He said, I'm the way. Yeah. You don't follow me, you don't go to God. And that's why he was killed, because he was claiming literally also to be God. Yeah. And he, and in the Bible, he, the, 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 more, the whole breakdown of the Bible, if you study it out, and it does say in the King James Bible that God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus is God. That he put on a human body. You know? So he's a spirit, he's got a soul, he's got a body. He's one God. The body is Jesus, the soul is the Father in the heaven, and the, and the spirit is the Holy Ghost that is everywhere. But it's one God. And so we can have the Holy Ghost living inside of our spirit. And that's how, and then God wants to live out through us. But he is, he can, you can hug God when you meet Jesus Christ face to face when you go to heaven. That's, that's the cool thing is he put on human flesh so he could have, so he could actually have a relationship with us through Jesus Christ, the son of God. So even though he's the son of God, he was, he was, manifest in the flesh through a virgin but he's he always existed as the word of god and the word was made flesh the bible says in john chapter one and yeah so the whole godhead thing is a great study when you, when you just break it down so the god of the creation has also sacrificed his life with an atonement so because without shedding of blood there's no forgiveness of sins like in the Old Testament, they used to kill an animal and, that would, and they confessed their sins and the animal took the punishment for your sin and died. But now, Jesus died that one time and he took a punishment for sin and so and he'll forgive you and it's a free grace forgiveness. You're freely given by, forgiven by grace, but it's not cheap. It cost God a painful death, you know. He felt that pain when he was crucified. 
that we deserve to die and go not only that go to hell so an eternal God has eternal laws and the only just punishment would be eternal punishment and but God's merciful he doesn't want you to have to go through that so he actually got involved and made a way of escape through the cross so it's you don't have to die just that one painful death you know which which he endured nobody wants to die like that but he did that that's why I worship God you know and the God of the Bible there's no other religion that has an atonement for sin like that so Buddhism doesn't have that Islam doesn't have that they, you know it's forgiveness is it's really important but there's also got to be justice you know for the child that's raped by a pedophile priest that guy needs to get punishment and that's what judgment day is for and uh, there's going to be judgment you know there's going to be a justice on, on judgment day and uh, but if we look at our lives, we've done things in our lives that we're all ashamed of. We don't want to admit, you know, but God saw that, you know. And, but all of our sin can be forgiven on the, by the, what Jesus did on the cross. If we would turn from our sin and forsake it and confess it to him. Say, you know what, I did that, Lord, you know it. And have mercy on me, a sinner. I suppose it's very comforting to feel that. It's so great. The forgiveness of God and knowing that he not only forgives you, but he actually died to save you from hell. And you don't have to do anything more but believe. You just turn from your sin and believe in what he did. And he saves you. You can't save yourself. Only Jesus Christ can save you. That's why he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he proved it. You can't make it. Your blood ain't going to save you from hell. But God's blood can't. That's beautiful. So, hey, man, the God of the Bible is worthy of our worship. Buddhism is nonsense. And how many times do you think you've read the Bible now? Thousands of times yeah, over because of I because I read time. it because I'm reading it constantly every day. You know, I go through different sections. Sometimes I read it straight through, straight through probably a few times. But yeah, I just dip in sections you like. Certain sections I'm memorizing. Certain sections I read just like a book in a sitting. But yeah, it, it's every time you read it, you get more revelation, and God speaks to you through His Word. You'll, you'll, you'll see something you didn't see the last time or you'll apply it to a certain situation. So it's a book you can read your whole life. That's why people read it their whole life and you can never stop, you never need to stop reading it. Powerful. Especially yeah. the book of Proverbs. Like I read that one every day. There's 31 chapters and then there's one for every day of the month. So like today's the 11th, you read chapter 11. And those little Proverbs, it's, it's the book of wisdom real powerful and so that's why you see some people are just extremely zealous about it and they want to tell people because it changes your life you know? wow. but also you see up, we, to our place? yeah and then you see people lost people that are just kind of like their their lives are in despair or whatever or there's some people that are rich but they're heading to hell you know the change of plan. We've got time for lunch now, so I think we're going to grab some food. Is that alright? Um, can we settle up here? And... You want to go to get some food around this area? Yeah, yeah well, no, we'll, we'll just go to we'll, a place next to our hotel. Okay. Because we haven't got to be at the airport until 12. 12 oh, you guys till 12.15? 12.15. Alright. So we'll probably settle up now. And... 